Please stand clear of the doors. Hey guys, we're on the monorail, and I can't wait to go ride Buzz Lightyear wait, Space Ranger. Wait, guys, guys, what? look over there. Is that Sebastian Stan? Oh, it looks exactly like him. What the? Hey guys, it's me, Joe. What's going on? We're, we're, you guys rode the monorail without me? Yes, we were having a great day, and then you showed up. Did you get a metal arm? Welcome to episode 127 of the Diz His Podcast. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. I'm Chris. Today we'll be giving the his on Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Before we actually jump into the episode, we want to announce that Chris is going to be an official member of the Diz His Podcast. So, Boo. Oh, whoa. (laughs) You could have built that up a little bit better. What could I have said? You could have introduced me. You could have said, you could have said, Guys, we have an announcement. Like, like suspense, Joe. Suspense. So I came in like we're gonna we have an announcement at the end of the show. We'll just edit it and put it at the end. No, okay, here we go. We have an announcement. Stay tuned at the end. So yeah, Chris, you know, welcome to the show. You know, you're we've been friends with you for you know Too long. Little, <laughs> like two years. Like we've been through this whole pandemic together. We talk to you. We talk pretty much like every day. And uh, you know, I'm just happy to have you here. Hey, man, I'm really honored to be a part of the podcast. It's really weird going from uh, in the beginning of the podcast, finding you guys on uh, on Apple Podcasts by searching up Disney History Podcast and finding this podcast, uh, then you reaching out to me to join the Discord, and then the rest is history. We became really good friends. Disney History. Uh, I'm just Disney <laughs> History. Yeah. Sorry. So I, <laughs> I'm just really happy to be on here with you guys. Um, my agent reached out to me a couple weeks ago with the that six-figure amount that uh, that Alex had offered. It all in Dogecoin. Yeah. And I graciously accepted and I just I haven't looked back since I'm to the moon, baby. To the moon. Yeah. And go ahead, Jen. I was gonna say that's really interesting considering I don't get paid squat. That's kind of weird because I'm actually paying for this for for this show to happen. So that's kind of weird. You guys are getting paid. I'm paying for the show to actually go. So uh but you know, when we do the history of the Diz His, uh we're gonna have to, you know, we can talk about the history of all of us, I guess, coming on the show. I don't know. Yeah. We have to do a whole documentary now. We should. Like, a... like E-Hollywood Stories or something? Y- yeah. We'll yeah, definitely have like, a segment ooh. in black and white. Yeah. Yeah, black and white, for sure. And a like little when docu-series, when like something... Last Dance. Yeah, and when something bad happens, you know, like, have that weird color, you yeah. know, like chrome. Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Like one of us. But, uh, and also, before we kind of, you know, get into the history of Buzz Lightyear, sp- um, Ranger Spin, right? Uh, in a SR Discord chat, I was talking to Combat Carl. I know a couple weeks ago we were talking about, you know, uh, cast members and they have a choice to getting the tickets, but then they also have a choice of uh, getting Disney Plus for like a year, like a subscription, right? And people were like, oh, well, why would you want to go ahead and get like Disney Plus over, you know, a a pass or a year pass? And some people, not everyone works at or near a park, right? There's some people who are working like in Seattle. There's some there are people working for Disney all over the world. So and, and they have don't they don't have quick access to a park. You know, they would take that subscription the Disney Plus subscription. I'm not sure if you guys thought about that. Yeah, no, no, we've saying thought it's not about just that. Employees, I mean, the park employees. It's like just Disney employees in general. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Exactly. That's cool. So or if you have, let's say you and your spouse work at Disney, oh, then yep. one of you can take main gates and one of you can take the Disney Plus. Good point. That's a really good point. So I just want to really that funny. That is really funny, though, like on, on the scale of like you have this Disney annual pass or a token for twelve dollars a month. You choose. <laughs> it is kind of it is kind of funny. How it it's is. Presented. It is. Right. But when you really think yeah. about it, it's not too bad, I guess, because you got, there's a b- bunch of like couples, you know, like you know, of who that work at Disney. So, well, I guess, the, well, well if, Jen, if only one of them. Oh, but if the one takes it, then they can go ahead and get both of them in. Is that correct? They can get people in. Yeah. 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 No, they get a certain amount of tickets a year that they can get people in on. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So let's get to the history of uh, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Okay. So what do you guys think of this attraction? I really enjoy it. I like going on it. It's fun for my son. It's fun for the, you know, the kids who go on the attraction. And uh, I really enjoy the ride. Alex? I do not remember last time I've been on this ride. Are you kidding me? It's a very long line whenever I look at it. Mm Mm-hmm. 
and um, I don't feel like it's really worth it. So but I'll, I bet you go on it now with your kids, though. I bet your kids will absolutely love it. I mean, yeah, when I, my kids get older, we'll probably go on it. But if I'm going to go on a ride that's where I go through and shoot things and I want to wait in line, I'll just go to Toy Story Mania. Yeah, Toy Story Mania is definitely a better ride. But, th- I mean, this is fun, though, also. I don't know. Especially when we get to the history here and we're talking about the, you know, all the tips and tricks. Like, you want to go ahead and get yes. those tips and tricks. Right, and try right, to get, yeah. You know, hit the goal of the max score. But, yeah, I can't. I can't. I, I, I can say without a doubt that I do not know I've ever been on this ride. What do you mean? Are you kidding me? Yeah. I really do not know I've ever been on this ride. Really? Really. Mm-hmm. I really have no idea. Okay. How about Chris? <laughs> What? What's so funny about it? It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I don't know. I just think it's ridiculous. I have no idea if I've ever been on this ride. True. That is I'm a little true. worried about it, actually. I feel like you would know if you've been on it, no? Yeah. But then maybe I haven't. <laughs> you have a terrible memory, man. Oh, my God. We're going to talk about this after yeah, the show. Yeah, we are going to talk about this after the show. Okay, Jen, how about you? Um, We like this ride. It's definitely... One that, that, okay, so Alex, you're full of crap because the line moves pretty quick. Well, I know, okay? but it looks long. But that's why you <laughs> it look at the look posted long. wait Right? Time. It looks long, right? <laughs> Alex is like, I can't go on this ride. It looks long. It can be like five minutes long. <laughs> it moves so fast. So there's that. Um, it's a fun ride. It's not one of my tier one. I'd say it's tier two. You know, if it's got under a 30 minute wait, we'll ride it. Or if it's something like it's raining or something like that, we'll do it. So, but Mm -hmm. still fun. I'm trying to find, um, when you guys talk about the uh, top score, I'm looking for something in my archives here. Hopefully I can find it so you can see that it can be done. Right. Okay. And how about you, Chris? Have you been on this ride? Yeah, I have been on this ride. This is, um, I, I don't think I, ever don't go on this ride i think i i think i always try to get on this one it's nothing great but it's nothing that i would skip either because i do think the line's relatively short every time i go i do have a question for you guys though because if i can uh compare this to another ride at a different park which one do you guys like better this one or the men in black ride now i've Ooh. been on that ride i like yeah. the men in black and ride that was better. fun yeah I like Men in Black better. Yeah, Men in like Black, Black. Is, is one of my favorite rides because I feel like because this both rides are dated in their own ways, right? Because this one, I feel like the laser thing is kind of dated, right? Mm-hmm. But of course, they go with that retro type feel, but it, it just feels dated for Disney. Men in Black is very immersive. You're going down the streets in New York and yeah. like, seeing 3D things popping out. Mm-hmm. That's why I just think that this this ride is a little a little dated for Disney. But that kind of what is what makes some of those Disney rides great is the datedness of them because you still have a, a blast on them. Yeah. And you kind of think about this for a second because this is not really m- made for adults, I would say. Right. It's more made for like kids. Right. And which one do you think a, which one do you think a kid is going to enjoy more? Do they think they're going to enjoy like a Men in Black? Right. It's, which is kind of scary. Or this Buzz Lightyear ride, which is more kid friendly. So I think, yeah. the, you know, I think this is you really have to think about like this. Disney, some of the Disney attractions are really meant for kids and they're not really made for adults, even though adults like them, right? <laughs> yeah. I do forget that a lot. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> do Wait, I... hold on. You think that it's, you think that Men in Black is scary for little kids? Scary for like, Joe, like... probably. <laughs> <laughs> There's like monsters and stuff. You don't think like, a, you know, what would a six-year-old They are want? legit monsters. Yeah, and what, what, what do you think aliens. a kid would like be more, I think a, a five-year-old, a six-year-old would be scared of going on Men in Black. You don't think so, Jen? Hmm... Uh, maybe your five-year-old, not my five-year-old. Neither uh, one of my kids at five. Uh, for Men in Black, I don't know. I think Men. Well, it's also been a while since I've been on Men in Black, so I don't know how realistic the monsters. But it was really scary are. when you were on it. Is it? I'm saying it was really scary when you were on it. Me, no, not for me. It wasn't scary when I was on it. <laughs> yeah, I was just for, for Joe. The night terrors haven't stopped yet. You know, so I <laughs> he hasn't been able to go back. <laughs> nah, nah that, that, was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> do you guys want to go ahead and put this to the rubric? Oh boy. Do you want to do what we'd give the ride? Well. Okay, so what would you give the ride without the rubric? And that's, let's see if our scores match up. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, I would give this ride a seven. Hmm. Oh, without, oh, so yeah, without. this is without the rubric? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go six. Chris? I'd go right in the middle at 6.5. And I would give it a four. Okay. <laughs> How can you even rate it? I don't think you can. <laughs> if you can't definitively say if you've been on it, I don't think you can rate it. You know what? That's a fair point. That is a fair point. Well, from the history, what can you think you can give it? Um, history, I give it a three. Oh my gosh, lower? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Like a five, it's decent. Okay, so if we go to the rubric, okay. and the first part of the rubric 
is how well does it do its job? How thrilling is this ride? Because I would say it's a thrill ride, right? It's supposed to make you excited and, you know, pumped to go through it. You got to yeah. shoot thrill things ride? and get, well, not thrill as in like scary, but thrill as in like afterwards you should be all jacked up. Like, yeah, I just scored a high score. Oh, okay. You know, we're very disappointed because I can never get past like 20,000 points. So, um, you know, gold star game changer, three points, not the best two points. It does its job. One point and zero is below Disney standards. Okay. Go ahead, Chris. I give it a three. I think, I think it's above the does its job, but below the blows my, you know, socks. off. Oh, so two. Oh, wait. So what was it? Three, three is two, the highest. One? Two is middle. Oh, one is low. Yeah, zero, zero. Yeah. Jen. Two. two. Joe. Two. That's all right. I give two. it. A, I give it a two. I think it looks like a fun ride. Okay. Okay, so now, how badly do you want to ride this again? Three being, I will go on it every single time, try to stop me. Two is, I'll make an effort. One is, if there's no line or someone else is making me. And zero is, I will never go on that ride again. Chris? So this is this question is flawed for me because I go to Disney once every two or three years. So a lot of these rides, like, yeah, I am going to make the effort to go on it every single time because I'm not going to get there for the next couple right. of years. But if this was in a scenario where I'm going to the parks all the time, I'd give it a two. Like I'll make an effort to go onto it, but I'm not like if I don't ride, I'm not going to be upset. That's fair. Jen? Two. I'll Joe? make an effort. Yeah, I'm going to go two, two. If I'm going to make an effort, you know, it's a cool ride. I'm going to do a one. <laughs> you, it's a one for you just to go to Disney. I mean, are you paying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the overall atmosphere, it does its job putting you in the place where it's supposed to be taking place. If that makes sense. Uh, three is try. No, I'm sorry. Three is I'm transported. Two is it draws me in. One is at least it's something. And zero is below Disney standards. Chris? So it's three, two, one, zero again? Correct. Uh, I'd give it a two. Jen? Uh, I'll give it a three because once you're in there, you know, it is pretty immersive. Joe? I'm going to give it a three. I mean, just like Jen said, it's very immersive. Yeah, I'll give it a three, too, because from looking at the photos and ride throughs, it's it looks pretty cool. If okay. I remember correctly, there's a lot of 2D and 3D things, right? It's not like a whole mix. There's a lot of just like signage in there. Yeah, this is a bunch of signage. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's the way it's intended. Yeah, and black light usage is awesome. Yeah, for sure. And last point is magical point, which means that it has a special place in your heart, a special memory to you, and you give it a point or you don't give it a point. Chris? It doesn't have a special place in my heart now. Jen? No, me either. Joe? Oh, I'm going to give it a point. Yeah, it has a special place in my heart. I think Joe gives every ride of a Disney a point. Is there a ride Joe has not given a special point How to yet? How can you not, man? But go ahead. <laughs> Zero for me. Okay, so overall score, Alex gave it a six, and you, without the rubric, you gave it a four. No, I gave it a five. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, Chris, uh, you gave it a six. I gave it an eight, and Jen, you gave it a seven. Hey, pretty, pretty true spot on. It. So we're pretty spot on with that. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that, that the rubric is pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Excuse me, I, I think the word you're searching for is Space Ranger. Let's get to the his on Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin is an interactive shooting dark ride attraction that debuted at the Magic Kingdom. This moving shooting gallery is of course themed after the Toy Story character Buzz Lightyear and is one of the most replicated attractions around the world. It has versions open at Tokyo Disneyland, Disneyland California, Hong Kong Disneyland, Disneyland Park Paris, and Shanghai Disneyland Park. This attraction located in Tomorrowland allows all guests to compete on an Omnimover with laser pistols trying to rack up the high score. So, uh... I definitely yep. go ahead. That's what? a description. I was going to say, yep, that's a description of the ride. <laughs> I had no idea, though, that it was at other parks. You know what? I did not know it was at other parks either. And not only is it at other parks, it's at a lot of different parks. We have a whole section of history just based on the different it being at different parks. Yeah. And that's I kind of like that, though, because it's almost like, OK, well, you know, I know that I'm doing the show. But I can tell you, if I'm going to Disneyland Paris, I'll go back and listen to the show and get some of the history behind some of the stuff that we have done at Disneyland Paris. Uh -huh. Just so not only that, I can go ahead and, you know, I, I can know what's at the parks, even, even though I haven't been there. Right. Right. Yeah. 
And, you know, it's cool that Buzz is such an iconic character around the world that he can have his own um, themed ride at multiple areas throughout the world. That's kind of cool. Yep. It is a weird staple ride, I think. I think it is a weird, like, it's weird that they want to put this at all the other parks. It's not like it's an insanely good ride. Uh, I guess when we get into the history, we'll see when they were put at the other parks, potentially. But um, if it was something that was added in the last, like, 10 years, it's kind of a weird, weird addition, especially with Toy Story Mania out. Well, you got to think about, yeah, Toy Story Mania, definitely. Like, it's like a step above the Buzz Lightyear Ranger spin. Uh, But it's still, you know, who doesn't like to go and compete versus other people, right? You always want to compete versus your brother, sister, your aunt, uncle, grandpa, grandma, mom, dad, whatever. You want to, you want to, you, you like to compete, right? It shows the score. And who likes, doesn't, who doesn't like shooting like aliens and stuff like that? I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Is there any other uh, game oriented rides that aren't Toy Story themed? In Disney, in I don't believe parks? so. I, well, oh, I can only speak for the two I've been to, but I don't believe so. Kind of interesting. Um, there is a Monsters Inc. ride in Asia, that and it's like that you, style. Yes, it's that style. Oh, okay. You yeah. have to shine a light on the. Th- I think you have to shine a flashlight on the things. Al- Alex, like, oh. yeah, I don't remember if I rode this ride, but I can go ahead and get this <laughs> random fact into nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I was going to say you're like you had to shoot like all the monsters from Monsters Incorporated or something. That's a very uh That's very sad. violent ride. No, I think you're I think you're shining a flashlight on the logo, very much like this ride. How you're hitting? Oh, uh, you have to flash people. Yes, I Indeed. would love to go ahead and get, do the history it's on that. Not that, that ride. kind of ride, Chris. Uh-huh. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin was not the first attraction to reside in the show building. Tomorrowland and Magic Kingdom opened in 1971 and originally only had a few attractions which were all replicas of the rides at Disneyland. The first expansion to land happened in 1972, and the South Show building received the ride If You Had Wings, which was sponsored by Eastern Airlines. The attraction was put together very quickly, only taking five months to construct. Imagineers utilized the same ride system in place at Haunted Mansion, the Omnimovers. This two-person dark ride would take guests to various travel destinations, allowing them to see the possibilities of future vacations, which can be started by an Eastern Airlines flight. In 1987, the sponsorship ended and Disney reopened the attraction later that year as If You Could Fly. This attraction would continue to change sponsors and names until Disney's Take Flight closed in 1998. On January 5, 1998, Disney announced the future ride Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, which was inspired by the up-and-coming Toy Story 2 movie. This attraction was originally promoted as a dark ride arcade that would put guests in the front lines of a Zerk battle. The idea for the ride was actually already thought of way before the attraction was planned. Imagineers in the early 90s had the idea to give guests weapons as they fought off xenomorphs in an aliens-themed attraction. Imagineers decided this wasn't child-friendly and so opted out for the now-extinct Alien Encounter. Yes, because Alien Encounter was so (laughs) (laughs) child-friendly. Yeah, you think putting the putting the uh, giving kids some guns to shoot at that thing would have been a little more child-friendly. I would. <laughs> they 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 went they went ahead with the uh, let's let's get use them defenseless. Uh, if this side of it. if this was an aliens ride and you had to fight off xenomorphs, I would be down to ride this ride. Alex would be first in line every uh, time he goes out there. That sounds really fun. They had a can weird we, obsession with alien. Can we go back though and talk about the what was there before? Yes, because I was reading this and I was thinking this is kind of funny because Disney's. Disney's kind of we've all seen the commercials, you know, you watch the the parade, um, the Christmas parade, which is basically a giant two hour commercial of all the mm-hmm. reasons to, you know, spend all of your vacation dollars on Disney parks. So I think it's kind of interesting that originally there was a ride at a vacation destination yeah. that encouraged you to look at other vacations. Like, yeah, I'm sure that's funny. part of the reason they changed it pretty quick. Yeah, yeah like, that is really interesting. Hey, after this vacation, go on a vacation here. It's like, uh, no, I have no money. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger spin only took six months to be built. It utilized the Omnimover ride system and the floor plan that was already there. The Omnimovers were painted to become XP-37 Star Cruisers, with built-in laser cannons and a middle joystick to allow the pilot to spin the vehicle as they pleased. Some guests didn't like the concept of a ride being built after a Pixar film. Only six months before Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger spin debuted, It's Tough to Be a Bug Open in Animal Kingdom. This was four months before It's a Bug Life was released in theaters, and a whole year until the release of Toy Story 2. The attraction opened on November 3rd, 1998, enlisting guests to become junior Space Rangers to assist in the fight against Zerg. The ride premiered the first close look at Zerg, the arch nemesis Buzz talks about in Toy Story. 
Guests are welcomed by a five and a half foot tall Buzz Lightyear animatronic. This animatronic had a small projection in the helmet, displaying Buzz's face. This allowed for realistic expressions and movements. After guests boarded their ride vehicles, they are scored based on their accuracy with their laser cannon, which is used to hit bullseyes and Zs throughout the seven rooms. The points are tallied and can range from level 1 Star Cadet 0 to 1000 points, to the max being level 7 Galactic Hero 999,999 points. So that Buzz Lightyear that's there in the line's really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, his face is, is kind of like projected or whatever. It's, re- it's, it's definitely really cool. Yeah, projection face. Do you, do you face. like the projections? I love them. You know, I, you, I think of that as a newer technology, like because yeah. Frozen, the Frozen right has projection on it. But 2004, they're already putting on Buzz, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, but it's not nearly as good as it is. Oh, yeah. Obviously, right? Technology, you know, gets better. Um, but it's still really cool. It it was a big deal when that when that ride opened. There were two things about it that were significant. One was um, the you know the shooting style ride, but then you know the joystick to have you change. So it's almost like three sixty, you know, a three sixty opportunity to you know play, and that that was a big deal. And then of course the at the time that Buzz Lightyear was probably the most technologically advanced animatronic that they had in the parks, and that was a huge draw to go check it out. So it, this did say this was the uh, first look at Zerg. Zerg wasn't in Toy Story One. He was in Toy Story Two, right? Uh, I might. I think he. Did they mention well, him in Toy Story One? They mentioned in Toy Story One. I don't think you really see him other than maybe on TV or in posters. But then okay. But then in Toy Story Two, you see him as an action figure. Right. So I was reading this. I was thinking, wow, that was a pretty big gamble. Them putting a ride centered around this person that you haven't really seen yet. And then I remember that they built a whole park. Uh, centered around something that they didn't release the next five movies for yet in Pandora. <laughs> so, so they have been there before, and this was kind of a small gamble compared to that, but still interesting nonetheless. Well, I can tell you, you know, how they do that, right? Uh, it is a gamble for sure, but it makes me really excited. Like, you're just talking about Avatar, right? And talking about um, Pandora, right? And Pandora mm-hmm. is out. They're making, they're going to put all this, they put all this money into a world, and now they have all these movies coming out. I'm like super excited for the movies. Oh, I too. love the world, right? I, I I went back and rewatched the first one. I feel like it's gonna pick up. I feel like that it's going to catch on. I'm telling and then, you. And then it comes out and it is terrible. It's not gonna be <laughs> it is like the worst thing ever. And you're like, oh my gosh, we just did for three more of these things. <laughs> you know what's weird is Disney never does things on time. It's either like premature like this or way in the future so (laughs) we have stuff like this happen we have princess and the frog rides happening 40 years after the movie released but then never (laughs) never so like i was so excited to go to disney because i'm like oh i can't wait to see the moana representation in the park like a few years ago because moana was this big movie yeah there's nothing and now they're finally giving her a little waterfall or something yeah but it's like they never do things they never do things uh, that's true it's it's right on time when you think they're gonna zig zig zag yeah (laughs) <laughs> uh, by far the biggest lag in between is pandora versus yes. avatar and i know that had to do with licensure and and rights and all of those things like that but still and i'm i'm probably in this minority of people who think that the original movie is just okay and i think so too i'm with I you i mean isn't it like fern gully like okay so i'm Love dating fern myself gully. but but isn't it basically just like blue people fern gully we've talked so, about this plenty of times <laughs> it's, it's just dancing with wolves in space yeah it's nothing exciting i i just i'm not looking forward to i'm not looking forward to it at all now flight of passage fantastic but you could you could do a lot of different things with that and make it more relevant I, I agree. You know, Avatar is funny because it hit both things. It ha- came way after and way before. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger spin was a quick success. And after Toy Story 2 was released, no one questioned why Toy Story deserved its own ride. By 2004, Disney decided to replicate the ride and place it in a different park. The first being Tokyo Disneyland. There, the ride is named Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster and is a very close replica of the original at Magic Kingdom. In Tokyo's version, the ride vehicles are known as XP-38s, and the plasters are not mounted to the vehicle, but instead handheld. The following year, in 2005, Hong Kong Disneyland debuted their own, named Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. This version is a direct replica of the Tokyo attraction, but was closed down in 2017 to be replaced with Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle. Also in 2005, Disneyland California received their own version of the ride, named Buzz Lightyear Astro Blaster. 
It utilized the infrastructure for the previous attraction Rocket Rods. At Disneyland, the Buzz Lightyear animatronic does more than just talk. Buzz is holding an Astro Blaster, and when he says a line about finding Zerg's robot, he blasts an etch sketch wiping off a picture of Zerg. The 2006 Disneyland Park Paris version named Buzz Lightyear Laser Blaster has Buzz doing the same routine, but the audio can't keep up and the laser shines before the firing action. The attraction at Disneyland Park replaced the Circle Vision 360 production Visionarium, which closed in 2004. There is even a tribute to the previous ride hidden. Beneath the box Obot, you can see 9EYE, which is the name of the Circumvisual Photodroid from Visionarium. At both Disneyland Park Paris and Disneyland California, the ride vehicles are called XB41s. The last version of the ride debuted in Shanghai Disneyland in 2016 as Buzz Lightyear Planet Rescue. This version of the ride has the most up-to-date feel, utilizing giant screens to bring the scenes to life. The queue can be best described as a Star Tours feel, with the longest indoor queue of all the versions. Well, there you go, Chris. They're still wow. putting it in all the parks. And, they're, and the names are getting progressively worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the names are all over the place. Oh my gosh. My favorite is the Buzz Lightyear Laser Blaster. Why? And what's the last one? Buzz Lightyear Planet Rescue. So this one's about global warming, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh so how do you i like seeing this ride from the people mover do you guys notice you can see yes. this ride from the people mover yes yes joe yeah you can yeah you can see like one one part of it right but originally it used to be three windows and then when they had flight um when they had the older ride flight or whatever it had three windows available and then they closed two of them uh when they redid the construction well i think you can see i mean there's one window you can kind of see what's going on that's really cool yeah. right and then you can see inside the gift shop. And I think they they show you, it, there's still like three scenes that attribute to the, the attraction. But you can see inside the attraction? And I'll, I'm not sure if you can, I think there's only no, one. No, you can, you can only see one. And then there's yeah. the girl that's getting her hair done. Yep. And then there's one um, where it's like the robot that looks like he'd rather be any place else in the world, but it's like a transport kind of scene. Those are where those other windows used to be. Mm-hmm. I kind of wonder if at the other attractions, if they have a people mover type attraction that does the same thing. Yeah, that'd be interesting to find out the the correlation of how Fantasyland is made and uh, what it looks like. Is there a people mover? We, we haven't done the people mover. We, no, we've done the people mover, have we? We've done the people mover. We did? Yes, I then, did the people mover with you guys. It was one of the first ones then, yeah, that's that I did. Oh, wow, I have to go back and listen and... to it and see you know, if the people movers at other, at the other um, lands. Now, one ride I left off the list because I don't see it as connection, really. But technically, Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster in Disney Quest is kind of like a different version of this ride, they say. Oh. Because it's Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster, yep. which is a similar name as other rides. And it has to do with Buzz Lightyear and shooting things. So they say it's kind of like it, but it's not because it's way different. Mm-hmm. I have but, to look that up now. You know. Did that come out before this ride? Disney Quest? Was that, was that out before oh, 1998? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was. Um, so I wonder if they just kind of took that and ran with it and yeah. created interesting. Oh, Disney Quest. I, I love, I love. Come on, Dis- bring it back, Disney. I bring love- back Disney Quest, please. Yes. If you're listening, when we know you are, go ahead and bring it back. Do it. I'll pay for it. You would you really? <laughs> no. Ship a coin. <gasps> Ship a yeah, coin. Oh, wait, <laughs> pay to go. That yeah. was the that was the Buzz Lightyear. That was the one where you rolled over the yes. ball. Yep. The oh, yeah. that was the best. It was the best. The best. It was the best. That was probably one of my favorite ones there. Now, being yeah. being a an only child, I remember going there and having to do it by myself because my parents didn't feel like be going on a ride. So I had to go. I had to oh drive God. and load and shoot. Nobody want to go on with you. I rode it like five times that day. Like they were just like, no, we're not going on five times. Wow. I feel like our sole mission was because I always rode with my husband was to take Joe out. Why? It really was. What I do to you. I, it, <laughs> it's not what you did to him it's what you will do if you beat them it's not but it wasn't me it was all him <laughs> because i was like driving and he was the one that was loading and like aiming oh my gosh so it was it was totally him going after you and, oh, then, okay. and then how stressful were you trying to make sure you drove cr- accurately and oh, well i'm sure he was telling me go this way go you know trying to catch joe because really that's what it was about i'm giving all i got captain <laughs> Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin and its various names is a great dark ride and even as recent as 2021, Disney has filed permits for labor and materials for construction in regards to the Magic Kingdom attraction. 
This would mean a possible refurbishment and maybe even a full overhaul of the attraction. Until then, here are some tips for becoming a galactic hero. To maximize your shots, aim for moving targets, targets at hard to reach angles, and the furthest away targets with their highest scores. When you come to Rock'em Sock'em Robot, hit the Z inside of the orange robot's left hand for 100,000 points. There's also a claw hanging down with the Z also worth 100,000 points. The top of the volcano is worth 25,000 points and will erupt once hit. In the battery room, hit the batteries on the bottom to make them fall down. Some are worth 50,000 points. Also hit the tiny batteries. The smaller they are, the more they are worth. In the next room, if you hit the worm-like creature on your right, it is worth 50,000 points. On the right side of the next scene, Zerg is sitting in a device. Hit the target at the bottom of the meter for 100,000 points. During the red spiral room, if you hold down the trigger, you occasionally will score 1,000 points, even if you're not hitting anything. After that room, follow the rockets until they pause and then aim for the Z on them. And under that is a metal plate on each side. Hit all those and you will rack up a significant amount of points. So here are some tips, Chris, were you like covering your ears the whole time? I was. <laughs> I, I muted the screen. I did not read any of them. I'm surprised that you wouldn't want to know about the, where, where to go get your points from. No, man. I want to be, do it fair. And so first of all, it is when fair I go into this thing, I'm here, for the, I'm here for the mission. I get like maybe 25,000 points. I'm just shooting Zuri the whole time. If I don't leave and Zuri's not dead, then I need to do my job. I'm not shooting for batteries and little Z marks and volcanoes. I'm trying to go in and do and complete the mission, Joe. So he's kind of like the person in Call of Duty that should be doing what he should be doing, not just trying to get all the kills. He's sitting there. He's trying to get the points, right? Because you always got those people where like, okay, the whole meaning of the mission is to get the certain points and hold the points, right? Uh -huh. So you always have like, what, two people that are trying to do that. Everyone else is kind of just doing whatever they want to do. Right. Chris, Chris, he's the guy that wants to get the points. Right, he wants cool. he, he wants to do the mission. His main goal is the mission. Yes, Gotta he doesn't care. care the mission. Yeah, he wants to get Zerg. He doesn't care about getting the most amount of points. His mission is to kill Zerg. I'll tell you what, too, man. I've never seen Zerg walk walk the streaks after I've uh, after I've been off that ride. So that's true. You do, you're doing I, I a good job him. out there. You're doing a good job out there. We got him. <laughs> All right, quick part, quick facts. Oh, hold on, hold on. What? Let's talk about the permits real quick. They're oh, still sorry. getting permits for this ride. Apparently, that's crazy, isn't it? What I are mean, you gonna do to it? They can, I mean, I'm sure, I was thinking the reason why they made this like a main focus ride is because it doesn't take a lot of money to upkeep, right? Right. Um, but if they're, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else they can do to it. I mean, I guess they can go ahead and up, update the, you know, the things that go up and down. I'm not sure what they're made out of. Can, know? can they change it so our um, lasers are not attached to the ride vehicle? What do you because mean? Because the other, in the history, the other rides, all of theirs detach. And have our like oh, handheld maybe. lasers. I do remember that. So if they could update it so we have handheld lasers, that'd be cool. Yeah, because we, I don't want to have a laser attached to the ride vehicle. Yeah, do you, how many people are gonna get hit with them? You know, we live in America, and people are not the brightest here. It's no, over in Disneyland. Like Disneyland. Disneyland oh, yeah. Yeah. is. I know it's California, yeah. but it's still part of America. Not sure. <laughs> quick fire, quick back. Let's go. The lasers used for the guns have been certified by the Food and Drug Administration and are safe. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin was named the 2004 Disney Magazine Reader's Choice Award winner for Best Magic Kingdom Park Attraction for Young Kids. Buzz meets nearby the attraction throughout the day. Also, don't miss the photo op with Zerg behind bars at the exit of the attraction. Magic Kingdom's attraction was sponsored by Mattel until 1999. The 2019 video game Kingdom Hearts 3 features a virtual version of the ride. Take a close look at all the batteries all over Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. You'll notice they all say Made in Glendale on them. Disneyland Park Paris' version is the only one not located in Tomorrowland, but instead located in Discoveryland. So Adam in chat said the FDA categor categorizes lasers. They're not the intentional standard, but they do. There we go. There, there it is. Also... This 2004 Disney Magazine Best Magic Kingdom Park Attraction for Young Kids. It's so it's so specific. Why? Best <laughs> King Magic Kingdom Park Attraction for Young Kids. I can see it, though. So they're just giving there's every <laughs> ride is going to win this at some point because every year a new ride is getting the award for Best Magic Kingdom Park Attraction for Young Kids. Oh, <laughs> do you remember Disney Magazine? I remember Disney Magazine. And they're giving their own awards out. So like the people that are creating the ride are also <laughs> awarding the ride. <laughs> We did a good job. We should get an award. You know what? We should get an award. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a magazine. We're going to Diz His Magazine and we'll have a, uh, we'll have a um, Diz His Employee of the Month Choice Award for Best Diz His Episode of the Week. And it'll, be, it'll just be our ep new ep the episode. The new episode? Yeah. Yeah. At least we can highlight that episode. 
Yeah, every week it's the it's the new it's the new award yeah award winning Disney yeah, episode yeah, exactly number one. <laughs> Just like every new TV show is the number one new comedy. <laughs> every show on television can't be the number one new comedy. It's impossible. <laughs> you know what the thing is is you can always say that because we when we were in the uh, food business, uh, you would see all these like uh, you know voted number one cheesesteak in all of South Jersey, and I was like, how do they do that? And they oh, you can just have someone tell you that, and then you get the quote, and it's 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 a uh, it's true. Like an elf when he went in to tell guys, like, because they had the best <laughs> coffee in New York. Congratulations, world's best cup of coffee. You did it. <laughs> That's funny. We hear Diz His think Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, Astro Blaster, Laser Blast, and Planet Rescue were all great rides. Buzz is a beloved character, and we are glad he has his own attraction enjoyed by so many people around the world. This dark ride arcade attraction is great for the whole family, and we hope this history helps you reach the Galactic Hero level. Dreaming of a Disney vacation? If you aren't able to go enjoy the resorts, then get yourself some Three Cheeky Chicks wax melts. Studies show smells help bring forward memories, so these smells are a must-have if you want to put yourself back at these grand resorts. Go to MagicallyScented.com to order scents like Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's an earthy smell with sage, lemon, and lime. There is a Port Orleans French Quarter, which has fragrance of flowers, cotton, mandarin blossoms, freesia, and peonies. The Wilderness Lodge Melt smells of mahogany, blood orange, red pepper, sage, cognac, bourbon vanilla, golden amber, tonka bean, and sandalwood. The Vero Beach Melt will transport you with its orange blossom, star jasmine, velvet roses, and greens. Just visit MagicallyScented.com and use promo code DizHiz20 to purchase a wide range of wax melts, candles, and room sprays, all made by Three Cheeky Chicks. That's Three Cheeky Chicks at MagicallyScented.com, promo code DizHiz20. That's three cheeky chicks at magicallyhasented.com. Memories, memories. Alex, do you have any memories? Anyone, does anyone else have any memories? <laughs> do I have any memories? No. <laughs> he can't remember yesterday. Jen, do you have any memories? <laughs> no, because my memory is actually your memory. So yeah. it's secondhand because it's just from text message. So it's yours. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of uh, you kind of found the picture and you posted it in our discord chat. And it's kind of cool kind of seeing the other pictures that people are sharing of them hitting the high score in Discord chat. Uh, it, it's just, it's fun to see the photos, right? Uh, but my memory goes with Jen's son. You know, we were on the ride and I was with him and he hit the top score and he was so excited. It was like, you know, at the very at the end of the ride, he got the sticker and he was like, I'm going to sleep with this, you know, tonight and put it underneath my pillow. And he was like this really excited about it. And you can see in the picture how excited he is. And uh, that that was a cool memory for me. And I, I mean, I'm going to I'm that's going to be a memory that I'm going to have, have forever. And that's the reason why I like going. It's, it's fun to go on this ride with other children, for sure, because they, they you know, it's fun for them. And it's fun for me, too. See, you have a sweet, wholesome take on it. Mine is more of the, you know, our family is definitely very competitive, as you know, Joe. And so it, it becomes a um, pissing contest of who can get the highest and nobody takes it easy on each other. Not even the kids. Like mm. nobody like, you know, oh, I'm way ahead of them. You know, I better slow down. No, that's not how it works in our family. <laughs> if you want to win it, you got to earn it. That's mm -hmm. how I feel. That's how I'm going to play my games with my kids. Unfortunately, we play games like Sorry or Candyland where they can just luck into winning. How about you, Chris? You got any memories? I actually was injured on this ride and it gave me the equivalent <laughs> of a purple heart for this ride, <laughs> which is really just throwing me out of the park because I reached over it into another vehicle to try to uh, take down Zerg because I just knew I didn't have him. I'd had him on the ropes, but yeah, I was, I was banned from the park for a week, but it was <laughs> for, for a week. It made for a good memory. Do you need to go on a trip? Do you hate the hassle of organizing a vacation? Well, say Hakuna Matata and call Matthew over at Travel by Chewy. He is an expert who can arrange itineraries from a relaxing Hawaiian getaway to an exciting theme park adventure. The best part is his services are free. Call him at 507-261-9773. That was 507-261-9773. And just let him know Diz has sent you. Check us out on Weeby Geeks, a new podcast website where you can find all your favorite geeky content. Just head over to WeebyGeeksPC.com. That's WeebyGeeksPC.com. And listen to all the other awesome podcasts, as well as Diz Is. Diz Is Diz His Review. Review. 
Winter Soldier. Movie. Okay, so uh, you watched that not too long ago, right? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I watched the whole uh, Marvel saga not too long ago. Well, actually, was it over the summer I did that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, re- I saw it recently, Winter Soldier. You know, it, it was better than I remember. I remember, I remember saying, you know, Winter Soldier, not that great of a movie. And then I rewatched it after watching them all in the line. And I watched it, you know, it was one of the first ones you watched because I watched it in chronological order. Um, but, you know, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the one thing about these Marvel Marvel movies is that there's so many Marvel movies, right? And you kind of yes. go back and watch them, especially with like the D plus review, and you really just forget how good they are. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of forget how much history and how much like backstory is in the movies too. Right, and then you watch like Winter Soldier, which is chronologically supposed to take place earlier, but then it has so many call outs or people in it from future movies, quote unquote future because chronological order that come in line again later in the Marvel universe. And you're like, hey, it's that guy. Hey, it's that guy. Exactly. Exactly. Chris, what do you think of this movie? Well, outside of the Avengers movies, uh, Winter Soldier is probably the best Marvel movie. Um, really? Has the best. Yeah, has the best story, has the most significance. Um, doesn't that also in the after credit scene, don't they have Bucky in the uh, like captured by the arm? Uh, you know, that's it, that's that really like shocking. Um, I don't know if that was that one or Black Panther, actually. Forget that. We'll cut that. But um the, the storyline for that, and also probably one of the most iconic scenes in all of the Marvel movies altogether, that elevator scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's in that one? That's oh, in that it one. Is. It was. Which they, have a, which they have a callback in Endgame, right? Where he says, Hail Hydra, which is also yes. a callback from the comic from a comic book that just came out a few years ago when Captain America was like a covert uh, Hydra agent all along. So it was like all these things were, all these tie-ins were really cool in the whole universe. But yeah, that elevator scene. Yes. I mean, that elevator scene that's is like amazing. a top five. You know, scene of all time. You know, you, everyone says I have a bad memory, but that elevator scene is so iconic that I was watching a show Community, and they did a duplicate of that scene with the, the Dean. Uh-huh. And they do a duplicate of that scene. As soon as it happened, I was like, oh my God, it's Captain America's scene, elevator scene. It was so it's funny. So funny. Yeah. Every time I'm in an elevator, yeah. I'm hoping that I have like these like Russian spies around me, and I always try to in, like <laughs> Who said they were Russian? But- um, they're Russian. They weren't Russian. No, I'm German. pretty sure. Yeah, German, German, Russian. Yeah, German, not in, like, you yeah. know, yeah. They're some oh. kind of spies. But, you know, this movie's so good. And Bucky's a great character. Yeah, he, he is. I think the show made him grow on me. Really? Yeah. Do you like him in the movie? He was all right. He's visually appealing. I, I wouldn't say that. that. Kind of I wouldn't like, say that. I think he looks like me a little bit. <laughs> 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 no? Has the dark hair like me? <laughs> no? No. <laughs> I think it's the build. I think that's what the he. I'm probably a lot bigger than like taller than it's him. The, it's the um. It's probably the metal arm too. It's yeah, very... I do have a metal arm. You can barely see. It kind of looks looks like I have flesh all around it though. Yeah. Earlier I said I was. You know... Hold on, hold on, Jen. What do you think of it? What do I? Oh, I love it. I but I we love know all you the love Marvel Bucky. Movies. Yeah, you do. But yes. we know that you love Bucky, and Bucky's a, a big. Uh, you know, he's a fan favorite in your house. He is a fan favorite. My daughter likes Bucky a whole lot. You know, earlier segment. I was totally, when I first started talking about this movie, I totally was thinking in my head uh, the first Avenger. Because I said, chronologically, it's one of the first movies. Mm-hmm. But this is oh, not. Yeah, I was confused by that. Yes, thank you. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> na- I don't know, the names got me mixed up. But now I know, I know. Hey, this is AJ for the D Plus Club, where we cover all things Disney Plus. Each week, I'll bring you the latest news and rumors, as well as what's new and what's coming soon to the Disney streaming service in the US and in the UK. And each week, we have a weekly movie club, where between November 8th and 14th, we'll be featuring the Pixar movie, Brave. Share your thoughts in the weekly movie club room in the Sorcerer Radio Discord at srsounds.com forward slash discord. And I'll feature some of your comments in this week's podcast. You can find the D Plus Club on all major podcasting platforms with new episodes every Sunday. See you there. Check us out streaming on award-winning Disney streaming site, Sorcerer Radio, on Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, or catch us again at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Sorcerer Radio is an amazing 24-7 Disney radio. Just visit srsounds.com or download the Sorcerer Radio app. All right, Joe, you start. Okay. What did you do in the world of Disney this week? So uh, I bought a whole bunch because I'm going out to the parks here again soon, right? We're, we're staying at Animal Kingdom. We're going to Magic Kingdom and we'll hopefully get a day pass, uh, uh, you know, on, that, on a Sunday after we're staying over on Saturday. Uh, we can go to like Hollywood Studios, Epcot, whatever. But I got some, a whole bunch of like, equipment to use at the parks. 
So I'm able to kind of go ahead and record rides, you know, ride throughs. Yeah. Like this his, maybe put some history on it, like ride to his. We're going to mm-hmm. bring back ride to his. And, uh, you know, I'm meeting uh, Dane from Big Beautiful Disney out there sometime in like January. And, uh, and we're working with Scott from the No News Friends podcast. So I want to be able to record when we're out there. So I bought some equipment for that. I pretty much in a small little backpack bring a whole bunch of, uh, well, I don't have a whole bunch, but I have a whole bunch of like everything super small. Like right here, Chris. Can you see? Mm-hmm. This is the, the pocket. little pocket thing right over here. It's like so. I can seriously like it's so. It's tiny. I thought it would be a lot a bigger than this. It yeah. is like a toothbrush. Yeah, that and a lapel mic, and you're all set. Yeah, exactly. So, and we don't even need the lapel mic because the sound on this is actually really. It records really well. Oh for yeah. The sound, but I do have like a laptop, a small laptop where I can bring out there and actually do like a show out there or one of the resorts. Uh, some, you know, I kind of got some new stuff which I'm real excited about and to excited to kind of share with everyone else when I'm out there at the parks. Also. You know, we, Jen, we did some booking today, right? We did. Yes. We did, we did. So we booked over for Memorial Day. We're going to be staying at the Poly. Is that correct? Yes. And which is, I'm real excited to stay at the Polynesian Resort. And also, uh, we are looking, because we can't book quite yet with our DVC points, but we're looking to stay at the um, Yacht and Beach Club for Labor Day. It's kind of crazy that we have to plan it out this far in advance, but it's nice to kind of have an idea of, you know, what you're going to do for the next year, at least the where you're going to stay and, you know, kind of start to shape little weekend trips that we like to do. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. And I'm trying to get Chris, you know, next week we're going to go and make a plan because he's hopefully going to be coming down sometime in like March or April or something like that. And we're hoping to kind of book at Ohana, right, and get some people in the area to, to come to Ohana with us. And uh, I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, hey, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and book Ohana for Chris. And she's like, do you think it's a little bit too late? And kind of, you really do need to book out in some of these big places far in advance because you just won't get, a, you won't get uh, a spot, right? People are do like, they know who we are? Huh? I know. Do they know who we are? I'm going to call them. Hey, this is, you know, this is Joe from the Diz His. And I'm like, oh, Joe from the Diz His, Ohana episode 47 or whatever, you know? No, that's not how it works, Chris. We're not that big yet. Uh, hopefully one day. Uh, but still, I'm real excited to get to all these different places and start going out to Disney. Hopefully, Alex and Christina, I know Alex doesn't like to spend money. He'll be able to go to Ohana with us, at least, and enjoy Ohana dinner. Are you paying? No. Oh. I'm not- hey, but hopefully they bring back the Ohana feast, the, um, what is it, the Twilight feast in the room? That oh, would be- Oh, yeah. They don't the, do that right for now? For next year. I don't think they're doing that right but now. They, they, but hopefully they, they'll bring it back. But they do have the restaurant open, right? Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Ohana's open. Yeah, yeah. So we got to go ahead and book that appointment, right, It Chris? was good. It was good when we went last time. Well, I'm reading the chat that Jared is a hunter. So if we can't get Ohana, we can just go to Animal Kingdom Lodge. Maybe Jared can hunt us an <laughs> animal. <laughs> How's that, Jared? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. okay, Alex, what did you do in the world of Disney? Oh man, you're I knew you were gonna ask me this question. Uh actually we just rewatched Coco for like the millionth time. But oh, it that's was a great you movie. know, it was the day of the dead, right? So we watched that. Yeah, I that's about it, really, Coco and uh, you know, other TV shows on D plus. Yeah, I know. Steve's saying in chat, write it down, man. Why don't you write it down? Because you need to when write I'm things down. doing it, I don't write it down. So why not? On your phone, just put a little note in your phone. This is what I did in the world of Disney. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Jen, I, talk, what, I talked to Christine about it. I just can't remember what she said. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Jen. What did you, what did you do in the world of Disney? It was a, it was a booking week. That's for sure. Um, I actually am eternally grateful to a good friend of mine because she was venting to me. She was disappointed. They released the candlelight processional dining packages. And, you know, that's something that we used to do every year, you know, pre COVID, but then they changed it and they required prepayment for the entire package when you booked it. And I think that happened in 2019. And at that point, you know, we're talking about booking a dinner for how many of us, Joe? Gosh, at one point there was like 12 or 14 yeah, of us yeah. eating dinner together. So one of us would have had to swallow that entire reservation and pay for it in full for a dinner four months later. Not so it. we decided not to do it. Yeah, of course. So we decided, you know, at that point, we're just going to take our chances and do the standby line and whatever. So my friend texted me and informed me that the candlelight package had opened up online and it wasn't prepayment. So I was able Ooh. to snag a candlelight percent professional dining package for my family. Cool. So I'm very, very excited. I don't know who the narrator is, but it doesn't matter because we're going to eat in Germany. It's you. Yeah. (laughs) They thought they they booked Bucky. 
Sebastian Stan. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, so we did that and I think that's it. And then we watched a bunch of, we set up a projector outside for Halloween and while, um, people were coming by trick or treating. We watched um, Muppets Haunted Mansion and some of like the, you know, Halloween shorts and stuff like that out um, while we were giving out candy. But it was really funny because at one point there was this big group of kids, like eight or 10 of them, and they walked right past the candy bowls and just sat down to watch the movies. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> the parents had to drag them away. And that's about it. So what about you, Chris? I did not do anything this week in the week of Disney. I uh, like, as you guys know, I'm getting married in three days. Oh, from the exciting. So, yeah, it's awesome. By the time this episode uh, so comes out, a, you will have been married. Yeah, yeah which is weird to say. I, uh, <laughs> so I haven't really had a lot of time to do anything outside of wedding stuff because um, I like to do stuff last minute. And this was probably the worst thing to ever do last minute because especially all the shortages we're experiencing now. And oh, yeah. Gifts and a lot like, of shortages. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, um, but uh, I will be coming down to see you guys. You are right. Um, I'm shooting for spring break, but my other plan is the um, having a wedding on Saturday, like we said, right? Midway through the ceremony, I'm going to take the gift box, take it right down to Atlantic City, put it all on black. And if I hit, I'm going to come down next weekend. Um, <laughs> if I don't, you'll never hear from me again. But, so I hope to see you guys next weekend. But if not, then it was nice knowing you. In but I also have some news too. Uh, I was, I didn't know this, but there's a, there's a live action Snow White movie coming out and Gail really? Gadot. Yeah, Gail Gadot was just cast as the evil queen. So that's kind of cool news. Who's that? Oh, I wow. didn't know there was a live Woman. action movie coming out. Who's Which Gail Gadot? Wonder Woman? Oh, wait. What? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that'll be kind of cool. Hmm. That's been a movie that's kind of not been talked about since World War II, I think. <laughs> like, like, like that. <laughs> like, has there any? Oh, I guess Seven Dwarfs Mind Train was. Um, Snow White. You know what? That'd be cool to see it back yeah. on the screen. You know what's funny about Snow White is, is right? I just put that on in my classroom today for lunch. I put on Snow White, yeah. and I was telling the kids how old it is. And you know, like sixteen years, it'll be a hundred years old. That's crazy. It's crazy. You can tell. That's too. crazy. You can tell. It's pretty bad. I don't know. It that is... well seen animation is really good. The animation <laughs> is very good, but the sounds. She sounds hard. like it's it's scary. Like That's it's something like if, I, if you fell asleep to that. <laughs> 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 I was say, who can they get? That's that's prettier than Gail Gadot because Snow White has to be prettier than the evil queen. Uh, She's pretty. That's a good point. I mean, I'm sure. Effects makeup. Come on. Yeah, no, special effects makeup. Exactly. What? They use makeup in movies? (laughs) Chris, in your vows, can you somehow Mm -hmm. plug the podcast? Oh, I could definitely do that. Yeah, because I'm still in the process of writing That's a good idea. Yeah, so I could say, I promise to, wait, what what day does this podcast come out? Tuesday. Tuesday. All right. I promise to love you forever. I promise to be your, you know, your, my, your best friend. I also promise to every Tuesday, listen to the Diz His podcast when it comes out <laughs> at eight in the morning. That I six, am now the host 6 of 6 a.m. Wink, wink. And then, and then I'll say, please guess reach under your chairs and scan the QR code. Please subscribe and leave a review. There you go. <laughs> right. That's a great idea. Listen, you're just earning your money. Oh, man. I need to bring <laughs> that needs to. Uh, I'm going to put that on the back of a shirt. We need to put that on the back of our shirt saying scan here to leave us a review or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Scan yeah. here to yeah. follow us on Instagram or whatever. Ooh. That could go oh, terribly. Man. You oh. know what a bad temper I have oh, at the parks. Point. You, you really want shirt. me to piss somebody off no, and then have them scan that, the QR code on the back of my shirt? We're, we're, we're going to have we're going to have like a oh, great listen. Love the host. Oh, great topics. Hey, this Jen. Woman cut in front of me in line at <laughs> Disney World. <laughs> I was yelling at the man. That could be fun, though. That could be fun to read. <laughs> so that's the his on Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. Thanks I'm for us. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Wow. Lost the job, man. You introduced me and fired me on the same oh, show. Wow. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. I'm not editing that out. <laughs> that's, that's good. Go ahead, Chris. Say I'm Chris. I'm Chris. Thanks for listening and have a magical week. Please follow us on all social media by searching Diz His 65 Share us and subscribe to our podcast to get the latest show when it is available. If you want to help us out, get tips, get your memories shared on the podcast, see pictures and videos of what we are up to at the parks, join our goof troop on Patreon.com and search for Diz His.